This initiative came out of various organisations in Australian foreign policy having a sort of simultaneous um, uh, belief that there was a problem with the way that our different communities talk together. Now, in doing this, we're obviously very much drawing off international examples. So, you know, very conscious of, you know, the US 3D approach, um, which, you know, has been around since at least Secretary of State Clinton. Um, and, you know, a lot of, I think, very, very strong support from, from our US defence establishment. Um, you know, looking at what the UK has done with its integrated review, which brings together development, defence and diplomacy in one strategic document. Um, but then, of course, you know, for a country Australia size, we're also very interested in looking at what Canada's done and what the Netherlands has been doing. And there's some really interesting examples of trying to bring together this more integrated 3D approach. I suppose the thing we are trying to add is this fourth D of dialogue, of of explicitly making sure that there are channels of communication across the three communities, which won't happen naturally. Naturally, they will be siloed because they have been created to be siloed in different organisations. And you have to work very hard if you're going to try to break down those silos. Um, what we've seen from the international examples is that if you want this dialogue to work, if you want communication across government, a whole of government approach, you need that dialogue element, that respect, that um, there is, you know, interest in respect for the other communities. And that's something you build up through communication. Now, in terms of take, making this case to, to government um, and to people outside of government, um, I mean, there's a very clear argument for development and diplomacy communities. Um, they tend to feel quite sidelined, um, uh, at least in Australia. I, I'd say, you know, a hard security approach is, is probably the more dominant at the moment. Um, and so for them, this is a way of trying to get more, um, you know, more communication, more respect for what they bring, how important they are as national tools of statecraft. But I think there's an argument for defence, which is very strong as well. Um, it can be about not wanting defence to be asked to carry everything, that every problem is a defence problem. Um, it's about having the other elements of statecraft properly resourced to do their jobs, because otherwise it's going to end up on defence's plate. And, you know, sensible people from a defence will tell you, well, there is only one thing that our, our military is optimised to do, and that's lethal, lethal force. Anytime you're getting it to do other things, that's actually not the most efficient approach. Um, I think there's also a sense that, you know, greater coordination gives us more tools. If you're talking about a stabilisation, a post-conflict operation, understanding that you have many tools at your disposal gives you more ability to impact on that, that situation. Um, and I think there's a sense that not just working together in crisis, but actually planning together, bringing defence, diplomacy and development perspectives together at the start um, of your planning actually gets you better thinking because every one of those communities has strengths, but also blind spots, things that they don't think up enough about and putting them together helps you see those blind spots a bit more clearly and you know move through them